Back in July 1989, The Atlantic had a cover story about dolphins. It began with a quote from the second century Greek poet Oppian. The hunting of dolphins is immoral, and that man pollutes those who share the same roof with him, who so willingly devises destruction for the dolphins. This magazine story by Kenneth Brower tells about the slaughter of dolphins and what one man did to try to stop it. Sam Labuddy was born in Wisconsin, raised in Indiana. His father was a biochemist, his mother a botanist. The son earned a bachelor's degree in biology, eventually came to San Francisco, and here at the Earth Island Institute he learned about the plight of the dolphins. Dolphins travel above schools of yellowfin tuna, just why no one quite knows. For centuries, fishermen have searched for the dolphins in order to locate the tuna. And until 30 years ago, the tuna were caught by rod, line, and unbaited hook. The dolphins have been too smart to be caught by this ancient method. But in the early 1960s, everything changed with the introduction of drift netting and underwater explosives. Since then, over six million dolphins have been killed. Eventually, in 1972, the extent of this slaughter led to the Marine Mammal Protection Act. Although the act was compromised almost immediately, in time the dolphin kill began to decline until the 1980s. And then the bars came down. Goals were abandoned, funds reduced, regulations relaxed, enforcement weakened, and the greatest slaughter of marine mammals on Earth was on again. It was a lesson, said the Atlantic, that environmental battles are sometimes won, but never the war. When Sam Labuddy asked the Earth Island Institute why the story wasn't being told, they said there was no visual documentation. Said Sam Labuddy, I'll get you all the documentation you want. With his last $800, he headed down to Ensenada, Mexico, and in October 1987, talked his way into a cook's job aboard a Panamanian fishing boat. In his belongings, he concealed a small home video camera. For four months, knowing nothing about videotaping except for the manual, he surreptitiously taped the slaughter of hundreds of dolphins. At the end of his fourth voyage, he took the tapes he had kept hidden in his bunk and shipped them off to the Earth Island Institute, the missing recorded evidence. Sam Labuddy's tapes were shown to Congress and to the TV networks. In March 1988, portions were shown on ABC, PBS, CBS, CNN, and NBC's Today Show, and for the first time, the blood of slaughtered dolphins appeared on America's television screens. A large-scale movement began urging American tuna canneries to stop buying dolphin-caught tuna, and a nationwide boycott followed. Finally, in April 1990, the major brands of tuna announced they were stopping. The battle was won, if not the war. What Sam Labuddy set out to do on that Panamanian fishing boat was a quintessential grassroots environmental effort at great personal risk. And his recent work in the Eastern Pacific has set the stage to ban drift nets worldwide, a resolution now pending before the United Nations. The environmental community has known for some time that we had a serious problem out here with the drift net fleets, and it finally came down to someone going out and getting a first-hand look at what was happening within the fishery. For outstanding environmental achievement in North America, a 1991 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Sam Labuddy of San Francisco, California.